Good evening, everybody. We want to welcome you to the East Point graduation, the 2023 graduation uh, and promotion ceremony. Right now, we want to um, have our entrance of our honorees. Oh, yeah. Let's give them a hand. These guys look sharp, don't they? Yeah. I'm telling you, man. I'm proud of these guys are right here now. Man, I've been waiting all year for this, I'm telling you. There's some of them, I don't know if they're going to make it or not, but hey, they're here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And we're going to roll right along because I know, I can tell already, I mean, we got a lot of beautiful people out here in the audience. But I noticed that some of the people walk by that table, they was like, man, it's time to eat. <laughs> if you like me, it's about 6 o'clock, it's time to eat. Um, first, we're going to have uh, invocation from Deacon, retired firefighter, Jimmy Jenkins. Hey, Amen. Good evening to everyone. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you once more and again to say thank you for your many blessings. We serve a mighty good God, a God who is able to do all things but fail. Lord, we just thank you for the one that have been able to make it tonight, and we just pray for the one that is on their way. Now, dear Lord, we just thank you for the graduates and the one that will be promoted also, dear Lord. We pray for them that our job well done at this time. So we just thank you for this opportunity once more and again. In Christ Jesus' name we pray that everyone said amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Next, we're going to have Mr. Andre Moore. He's going to do our welcomes and acknowledgments of the city officials, command staff, and fire personnel. Mr. Andre Moore. Good evening, everyone. As our logistics officer Gooden said, my name is Andre Moore and I serve as the Homeland Security Manager for the City of East Point. Uh, as we prepare for this graduation and promotional ceremony, I had a chance to reflect on the many successes within the East Point community. I also concluded that we live in a world that uses the term hero way too loosely. We overuse it for movie stars, TV personalities, and professional athletes. And while such individuals might have some unique abilities and even occasionally encourage, engage in heroic efforts, they're not our true heroes. Want to see some true heroes? Look around this room tonight. For those participating in today's ceremonies, yesterday's heroes are sitting across, you, across from you as your parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles. They spent the first 18 years getting you ready. Their influence will continue to fade as you develop yourself personally and professionally. However, they left you grounded with your morals and your integrity. That is a root system instructor. What rises above that becomes your character. Today's heroes are the backbone of the East Point Fire Department. They are the firefighters, fire apparatus operators, lieutenants, battalion chiefs, and the families. They are the ones who work tirelessly 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to keep everything running smoothly. Last year, our dedicated staff of 64 
Fire suppression personnel responds to over 9,500 emergency calls in a 14 square mile area. With those statistics alone, it makes you the East Point Fire Department one of the busiest fire departments in the nation. Our fire department is led by Fire Chief Corey Thornton, a seasoned veteran of the fire service and is supported by a talented and dedicated command and administrative staff. I also want to take a quick moment to thank our East Point Mayor, Deanna Holiday Ingram, and our council members. I'll go through a quick list of the council members. Ward A, we have Council Member Shropshire and Council Member Robertson. In Ward B, we have Council Member Karen Renee and Council Member Josette, Dr. Josette Bailey. In Ward C, we have Council Member T. Star Cummins and Council Member Myron Cook. And in Ward D, we have Council Member Joshua Butler IV and Council Member Stephanie Gordon. We'd also like to take a quick moment to thank our City Manager, Mr. Darren King, and our Deputy City Manager, Ms. Janicia Elias, for their support and strategic investments in the fire department over the years. For those that are in attendance today, and for those who only exist in our hearts and minds, it is with great pride that I stand before you today to welcome everyone to celebrate these accomplishments. This is your night. Next, I'd like to introduce our logistics specialist, Mr. Sidney Gooden, who will also introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you. I'm going to tell you something. This keynote speaker that I'm about to introduce to you guys, have you all seen those billboards that say, you know, call a certain lawyer or call a certain attorney if you get this, you get that, and all that stuff like that? Those guys, and they start to tell you about how much money they done made and all that stuff like that. Those guys don't even compare to the guys I'm about to introduce you to. All right. I want to introduce you to the, manage, the managing and founding partner of the Weems firm the interim attorney for the city of East Point and East Point City solicitor. When I tell you, when you hear this guy, you're going to be just blown away. This is one of the biggest guys in the industry. I'm just letting you know that right now. When you finish hearing this guy talking, you're going to be out there getting a business card. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you attorney Antavius Williams. that after that I'm not sure if I can live up to it but uh, I'll try. Um, I am Octavius Williams and I'm honored to be here tonight to congratulate each of you uh, and to welcome you to the City of East Point Fire Service. I'd be remiss if I did not take an opportunity to welcome uh, our elected officials in the room uh, including uh, my my own fraternity brother and uh, Mr. the Honorable Myron Cook uh, who's a uh, the city of East Point. Um, so I, but as I thought about what I wanted to leave you with today, I really kind of reflected on what is it to be someone who's a first responder? Because that's what you're known to be as a fire person or a police officer as a first responder. And then I thought about how important it is as a first responder um, that you've chosen to put your life in danger every day. Every day. Every day you kiss your babies, you kiss your family, you walk out the door not to know whether you're going to return. And that's heavy. And I know this is a night of brevity, this is a night of lightheartedness and laughter, but I want you to take it very serious that that part is very, very heavy. And what I want you to understand about that is when you're doing that, you're not only leaving yourselves, but you're leaving everybody who you kissed goodbye when you left home that day. And those are the people that have to carry it when, you, when you're gone. I remember when I was about eight years old, I wanted to be a police officer. And I went to my mom and I said, I know what I want to be. I was a little young boy growing up in Carver Home. My mom wanted to be a police officer. I want to be a police officer. So she said, okay, that's great. And I said, can I, do you think I can do it? She said, of course you can do it. But you talk too much. And I don't want to get that knock on my door at 3 o'clock in the morning saying somebody done something to my child. So go dig deeper. And I ended up becoming an attorney. But that weighed with me for a long time. 
fine because what I realized that she was saying as I thought back through this was, I don't want to have to have the worries that all of you all have when you all send them out into battle. Because these are the people who you love. But what you taught them is to also love their community as much as you love them so that they'll be able to protect and serve it. So that when they go out into this community to protect, to protect and serve the citizens of East Point, that they're going to come back and that they're going to run in your name and that they're going to come back to you safe and sound. So one of the things that I thought about, I said, so what can I do as an attorney? I was just thinking, I, I, can't, I can't give them money because I ain't got none. Contrary to popular belief. What can I do for these people, for these great ladies and gentlemen who are now embarking upon this new career, this new phase of their lives? What can I leave them with so that they can make sure that they understand the importance of what it is that they're embarking upon? What do you think it is? If you're embarking upon a new career as a first responder, because contrary to popular belief, when you think first responder, the first people you think about are what? Police. No, it's fire and police. Because F comes before P. Every day, all day. Right? So when is it that you could leave these people that could help the most? It's something that you probably hadn't even thought about. I want each and every one of you all who have embarked upon this to think about the legacy that you are not only creating for yourselves, but what the legacy is that you're leaving to your families. Those people who are here now, if you'll stand up and look into the audience, each of you all who are being promoted today, look into your families' eyes, look into their faces as they're proud of you, and as they're sending you off into the fight, those with the pink, I don't got pink fire up here, so. <laughs> with the pink and red fire helmets, what it is that they're actually going to be expecting you to do for them in their family, your family name. Because when you come back home, they want to know that you're coming home safe, sound, and whole. They want to know that you are going in with the best experience, the best training, because you're in these points and you've gotten that. But that you're going to bring that training back home and it's going to bring you back home safely. So one of the things that I thought about is as an attorney, what I want to give to each and every one of you all is a wheel. And I know that's heavy, but I've been a black man now for 51 years, 52 years, I forgot how old it was. <laughs> and in those 52 years, one of the things that I've learned in the last six months is that many of us don't have wheels. So I'm going to give to you each and every one of you all who have been promoted today, a wheel, a free wheel, for my law firm. Because I want each and every one of you to get your, your affairs in order. Not because I think either one of y'all going to doubt it, like, damn, he just killed them all. <laughs> <laughs> Not because I think this is going to happen, but because I want you to be prepared. So don't go write obituaries, I'm not saying do that. They're like, damn, I I think of my design. You follow his resignation in the morning. <laughs> your, your city attorney done kill me off already. So, and that's not what I'm here to do. But what I am here to do is to make sure that there's some appreciation for the heaviness of what you are here to do. The city of East Point is a phenomenal city. The city of East Point is a city that, unlike most, has its own utilities, has its own water system. Has his own. What? We got everything. But one of the things that City Beach Point has that a lot of people don't know of is the City Beach Point, I learned this recently, the City Beach Point owns Sweetwater Creek. A lot of people don't know that. This city owns Sweetwater Creek. So this city has prepared itself for the longevity of the next 300 years. That longevity has afforded us to be where we are today. But what East Point has also done, because as I look around the people who are here today, I'm very proud to see a whole lot of African-American males. And I'll just be transparent. 
Having been in Africa, I really grew up in Atlanta. I remember being a young man that grew up in this area and not being able to come in certain areas. So I'm proud to be here today. I'm proud to see each and every one of you all. And I want you to think about the training that you embarked upon and for every day that you come to work, think about these people that are here today to celebrate you. Think about these people who are here to really tell you that they love you, that they're giving you their all, that they want you to come back home to them safe, sound, and whole. Because without any of them, none of us would be here. Because they're all here to celebrate who you are. So I'm here to just say congratulations. I know y'all thought I was gonna come prepare and give all this flowery stuff. Hope I didn't make you too sad. But I wanted to bring it home to let you all know that I, I want to get to the food too. But I wanted you all to understand very clearly my goal here and my role here is to support you. Yes, I'm the city, Denver city attorney. I'm the prosecutor. I'm the guy that will generally be yelling at you when you do something wrong, when you make cases. That would probably be me. But at the same time, I'll also be the guy that has your back. I'll also be the guy that when you call me at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, this is what I found, I'll be there. Because there will be that time that comes that you'll go into a house and you might find something that you never thought you'd see. You might find a infant deceased on the, on the floor. You might find an arson scene that was there created to cover up a murder. And I'm speaking from experience because it's something that we've seen in the city most recently. So be prepared. This is a heavy and daunting task that you're taking on. It is not but a job. This is a career and it is a duty that you have embarked upon. And we're expecting you guys to do exactly what you signed to do. Be the best. So with that, I welcome each and every one of you to the city of East Point. I'm excited to have you here. Your will, as I stated, is paid for it. It is free. I'm excited to, to give it to you. I have asked Chief Thornton that whenever you uh, tomorrow morning will get a list of whom, of all of you all, and you all will simply just call my office and give us your name, and I will have one of the attorneys of my office to create and deliver your will to you at no charge. Because I believe in who you are, but I also believe in the legacy of who you want to become. Thank you to each of you, and congratulations again. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And uh, just, I just want I got one quick question for you before we get started with the rest of the program. I'm gonna go ahead and put my name on that list too, but I think we'll. And uh, my mama gonna need one too. <laughs> and I got two sisters. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, just moving on. We have a uh, chief here. He is phenomenal. And I tell you, this guy is a training chief. And all the guys here can attest to you, this right here. Chief Evans is the man. There's a lot of training chiefs around. We done had some great ones. I trained up on the Chief Tate, Chief Anderson. Chief Evans, that's a training chief. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Chief Timothy Evans, training chief. Good evening, good evening. Chief Thorne, I'm going to let you know right now that this is not four pages. It's one. It's just the front. It's not going to be, I promise you that. So, um, I've been known to be long-winded, but I promise you I'm as hungry as anybody in here, so I'm not going to be long-winded today. Uh, whenever we have a recruit class and the families come together, and I'll, um, I'd like to discuss, I call it the journey, of what it takes to be the eight gentlemen that are sitting in these chairs over here today. So, if you look back... We started, pulled the applications back in March of 2022. 
Um, at that time, I had 107 applicants that were scheduled to come to do the first phase of our hiring process, which is where you come to do the physical agility test. So 107 people start out with physical agility. At that point, they put in their applications. They probably waited three or four months to hear from us. They finally get that call, they come. After they pass the physical agility, we require them to do a written test. The written test is, uh, I think it's 90 questions y'all took the test. It's a pretty tough test. Um, so you have to successfully pass that test. Following that, if you're set, uh, successful at that, we, uh, we do a panel interview. That's where you sit in front of three or four of these hard-headed chiefs over here, dressed all nice, and they're looking at you like, you know, they don't want anything to do with, and they ask you a bunch of questions. So you gotta get past that phase. Then if you are so lucky that you get past that phase, we're gonna do a very extensive background check on you. We're gonna dig deep into your life. We can look at your bank accounts, we can look at your criminal history, we can look at your personal history, where you live, everything. If you're good enough to get past that, then we're gonna send you to the man right here, Chief Thornton, he's going to lock you up in his office in there. He, does, he always carries one witness in with him, though. We, we always got an extra body in there. And you're going to sit in front of him, and he's going to grill you with questions. So you made it past that. Guess where we send you next? you got to go take a psychological test. And boy, you're talking about somebody that really pries into your business. That doctor does. So you do that. What did it last, guys? About six, seven hours? A whole day you're down there having a psychological evaluation done. You get past that, then we're going to send you to a medical doctor. We're going to put you on a treadmill. We're going to make you do a stress test. We're going to make you do all that stuff, blood work, everything. If you get past that step, final step, you come in here, we fingerprint you with the FBI, make sure you've got nothing hidden in any other part of the world. And if you're successful on that one, you're hired. So as I said, we started with 107 applicants back in uh, April of 2022. These eight made it. They did 14 weeks of a recruit class, successfully passed the state test. So congratulate them. Out of 107, these were the eight that we chose. So anyway, speaking to you for a minute, Understand that this is just part of this journey. As y'all know, y'all aren't even eh, three quarters of the way through it. We still got the EMT school going on to get that final thing headed, and y'all know how tough that is. But what I ask of y'all today as you sit there, just think of this. You did a lot of training over that 14 weeks. Don't stop. Keep training. Continue to educate yourself. Work hard. Don't let nobody form opinions for you. Form your own opinions. Form your own route that you want to take, go for it, be smart, be studious, be dedicated, and I can guarantee you, each one of you, I can look to see here. When I come back after I've been retired for several years, I expect great things out of each and every one of you. I know I told y'all I was counting Mondays down, but I still got a few more Mondays to go before I retire. So, we had a little funny thing in the class. What was it, guys? Congratulations. <laughs> well, today I'd like to say congratulations, you passed. I'm very proud of you. So, uh, at this time, we had them vote and decide who they wanted to be their spokesperson. I, don't, I can't come up with a good reason why they chose you. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to introduce you to Firefighter Tolbert. Hello, everybody. Chief Thornton just jokes. <laughs> My name is Firefighter Justin Tolbert, and it is an honor to speak with you on behalf of the 2022 2023 East Point Fire Recruit Class. First, I would like to thank God for allowing everyone to arrive here safely and allowing us to gather for this celebration. Next, I would like to thank the City of East Point Mayor, Mayor Ingram, the City Council, and everyone who facilitates East Point City business, which in turn allows us to operate and thrive as an elite fire department within the Metro Atlanta area. As I look around, it is great to see the firefighters, friends, and family that are part of the ever-growing East Point Fire community. To Fire Chief Corey Thornton and the outstanding staff you have put in place to guide and mold us into firefighters, we thank you. Chief Thornton, 
I also want to let you know that we are all in full compliance with the uniform policy. <laughs> in preparing this speech, I assumed I would be nervous. That was before I looked out into the crowd and saw the people who are responsible for giving me every whooping I received in my life. My parents, my mom raising their hands for no reason. <laughs> I also see the training staff, led by Chief Tim Evans and Instructor Andre Moore, who are responsible for giving us knowledge and putting us through some of the toughest workouts we have been through. They certainly were not appreciated at the time, but they helped us greatly on this journey into the fire service. My recruit class of eight still has yet to come up with a cool name for ourselves, but if you ask anyone in this room about the new recruits, I'm sure we have all made a lasting impression on each and every man and woman in this room and on this department. I'll share with you a few memories my class and I have been privileged enough to make thus far. I'll start with Confined Space Week. Remember that, Chief? <laughs> the advice I got from Chief Evans and Instructor Moore was, it's just training, and you just have to fully commit. Didn't help much, but great advice, and thanks. <laughs> my class has such a special, pay, special place in training Chief Tim Evans' heart that he felt the need to start counting his Mondays left until retirement. <laughs> Our Wednesday food delivery trials and tribulations. Imagine eight firefighters, all from different places and different age ranges, trying to deliver 25 care packages to the citizens of East Point without cell phones, and none of us having or knowing how to read a map. <laughs> Just relying on the youngest person in our class, Joseph Hill, solely because he's from East Point. <laughs> Exactly. A great, a great team building and bonding moment, purposefully orchestrated by Instructor Andre Moore. Instructor Moore would say, I don't need to ask how it went because you all got out of the van and no one looked back to check on each other. Or Ms. Shelton, who mistakenly refers to us as baby and sweetie, then remembering to address us as firefighters. We also have Mr. Gooden, who refers to us by number. Maybe tonight we'll be promoted to having names. <laughs> to the guys on my truck, FAO Wright, Lieutenant Taylor, Firefighter Turner, I want to say I thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to sing Itsy Bitsy Spotted last week at the community event. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, as a firefighter one, my only job is to take and follow direction. With the current and newly promoted people placed in leadership roles, I can confidently say Everyone before you today will be trained, taught, and mentored in a way that will continue to show the city of East Point Fire Department as elite. Finally, I would like to thank the training staff, firefighters, FAOs, lieutenants, and Battalion Chief Tony, and all of the online personnel that we have the opportunity to learn from and be mentored by daily. I am thankful to be a part of this graduation and promotional ceremony. I look forward to everyone that will come before you this evening. On behalf of the 2022 and 2023 East Point Fire Recruit Class, we thank you. What, what, what was your number? <laughs> you got to give them numbers because you can't commit to all these names, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, as you go through this, this class and everything, everybody's got a name and all that stuff. So, you know, I, I'm getting too old, man. I can't be putting all this in the Rolodex, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jeez, those people. Um, presentation, man. So next, what we're going to do, um, I, I just got to talk to him, but I got to talk about this guy, right? We have a video presentation. Now, I know what you think. You know, there's going to be a lot of cartoons up there and stuff like that. But this guy, when you see this presentation, oh, you know what? I'm not even going to say it anymore. Mr. Anthony Lee, Fire Inspector. Watch this.
something that's always going to happen to me. So that's what I'm here to fight for. I became a firefighter because I would like to help my community. Once I became a firefighter again, I felt a little atmosphere, so I want to come back to some of my new ones with you. The reason I wanted to become a firefighter is because I was a firefighter for other people. So I felt like a firefighter would be perfect, perfect naturally. I was going to run around, lift on my drawers, just run around with my firefighter hair on, and get down with stuff. So I'm going to hit it maybe more.
my career, utilizing my skills to advance myself as a firefighter, now as a driver, my apparatus operator. I get to, you know, help the people at East Point, provide excellent health care, drive cautiously and effectively to any kind of emergency situation. And, you know, I just feel like it's my time. I've been here seven years. It's time to, I've learned my position as a firefighter. It's time for a new challenge. New opportunities, new advancement. You know, it's elevated. It's pretty much what most of us need to do. It means a lot to me. It's going to help me and my family in the future. This is East Point has been my whole life. I'm from East Point. I've um, been here since September 25th, 89, which is almost 34 years. I'm just thankful for Chief Thorpe and his command staff for believing me and believing in all of us. Thank you. Here I can be helping with the citizens of East Point and just make a difference. That's what I like to do. Appreciate everything that's been done for me. Yeah, I'd also like to thank my wife, Mary Jo Turner. I'm not going to be here for you. 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 Also, teaching.
each other people that I know. Um, so I'm, I'm very glad to be here. Uh, glad to be back with people that taught me uh, how to be a firefighter, how to mature, how to think different. So thank you. That's all I can say. It means that I can better serve the community in this new world. on our uh, promotional guys yet. But here to do that is a person I can uh, honestly say I call my friend, and he's one of the battalion chiefs of the East Park Fire Department, Chief Charles Kendrick. Good evening, everyone. Uh, when I make this statement, I'm going to look this way slightly, and you'll understand why in just a second. Chief Thorne has given me 45 minutes to speak on. <laughs> did, did he look at me? Okay. So I decided that I better put it down on paper because I don't. If I don't do that, I'll be left here. So uh, Chief Tate often say I speak too much. 
Chief Anderson always on me about just around and, and just talking, right? So I'll just get right into it. Promotional preparation, can you hear me fine? What does it take to advance in the fire service? You must first start out with, I want to serve. You step into the fire service, provided get past this, get on the truck, make it into shift, thinking, I remember when I was at it, I want to go 100 miles per hour, right? Remember that? 100 miles per hour. You want to do everything. You're thinking, I'm just going to take off and do everything. I want to, I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to do DMS calls. And then you quickly realize it's more than that. It's more than fighting fire, running emergency medical calls. It's a lot of other parts that run to it. And we'll speak on just a little bit of that. In just a little while, we get to that point, point where we want to get promoted. And you realize, if I'm a firefighter, the next step is FAO. So you have to practice, study, learn, train to become a relief driver. Covering everything, you have to learn things such as learning your streets, driving, do regard, popping the truck, the capacity of the truck, a multitude of other things. Then you have to ex execute it on test day. And that's when you have a chance. If you're the best of the best, you will become a fire apparatus operator. And that's what these gentlemen did on this side to my left. Moving on to lieutenants, you must package everything you have learned from being a relief driver to coming down and making FAO for the ones that made FAO. You do not have to be an FAO to test for lieutenant. You need years in service and you need to be a relief driver for so much time. This group must have skills, knowledge, skill, and ability, and know things like fire ground tactics, decision making, and problem solving, just to name a few. And once again, on test day, you have to be the best to make it here. And these fine lieutenants, you'll see later, they did that. And moving on to the battalion chief. The battalion chief has to be a lieutenant. You have to be a lieutenant to even take the test for a chief. There's no skipping up, there's no way around it. You must apply everything you have learned in the fire service, from running fire calls, EMS calls, personnel issues, citizen complaint, dealing with human resources, and this is just a small portion of what must be applied to promote. And finally, you must once again show everything you can do on test day. And it's slightly different for the battalion chief it's only so many spots. In this case, it was one spot. So you have to be what? The best of the best. And these gentlemen did that. And that's how it's done in the fire service. Congratulations to everyone who promoted. Now go out there and perform. Make us proud. Make your family proud. But most importantly, serve the citizens of East Point and the visitors of East Point. Thank you so much. camera time. All right. <laughs> well, we're going to start the graduate. We're going to start the graduation and the promotion ceremony now. We're going to ask for the chief to come up front so we can start passing out helmets <clears throat> to the graduating class. Graduating class. Go ahead and pay attention. Stand up. Mr. Moore, chief. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes.
Dustin Tolbert. You may be seated. Next, we're going to start with our FAOs. FAOs, will you please stand? You may not be seated. <laughs> Lieutenants, will you please stand? First, we'd like to call Lieutenant Zovich. 
not least, Lieutenant Cooper. We also have two more promotions that we did uh, this year, and that person is Fire Inspector Lee. And also, we have one of the gentlemen, the, the chief that's standing up here right now with us, is the Fire Marshal, Assistant Fire Marshal. Chief Contagious Hill. Thank you, Commander. I appreciate it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have got to give this, these promotees one more big hand of applause. They are the very I was going to keep the program short. I had a couple of jokes I want to tell, but, no, let me see. but for right now, we're going to listen to closing remarks from our fire chief, Corey Thornton. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. I kind of don't. I don't like to get to the mic, so I just want. I'm going to be real brief, but I want to give you an understanding of what the fire service is. Now, this is the start on the right. This is the middle, um, near the end, on the left. So when you think about the fire service, you have to incorporate everything. You incorporate family, you incorporate friends, and you incorporate the government in the fire service. I've been here for 28 years in East Point. I was born and raised here. Some of the people, like they told you, he was from East Point. Chill, from East Point. So here in East Point, and the solicitor told you that a lot of times, years ago, people couldn't get jobs. So here now, we provide an opportunity for people from the community to actually come serve the family. 
And one of the key points with all of that, you have to have a vested interest in everything that you do. If you have a vested interest, your ability to serve is better. That's why when you see all over America right now, police departments get a bad rap. A lot of times, they're not from the community. They don't have a vested interest. So we look to hire with a vested interest because you have the ability to serve a whole lot better. So our department is moving forward, and we're doing great things. So for you all, from the beginning, you're going to travel over, and you're going to be on this side. I won't be here forever. So we don't have to look outside. It's here within our city. We manufacture cheap lieutenant FAO. You don't have to go outside. It's here. And as long as I'm here sitting in this seat, I pledge that you'll get to this side. That's it. All right, folks. It's that time. Diggy Jiggy, if you don't mind, just take us home and bless our food. <laughs> One thing that I forgot, I apologize. I want to announce who we have in the building, and I apologize. I would be remiss if I don't name my council members. We got Council Member Star Cummings. She is actually, it's a privilege for us because she's a battalion chief for the city of Atlanta Fire Department. So we have a decision maker that understands what we do. So I want to thank her. We have our deputy city manager, Janisa Elias. In addition, we have Council Member Cook. He's our Council Member for Ward C. And also, we have our City Manager. He's over the whole operations of the city. That's City Manager Darren King. And I'm pushing on the seat now, but I just want to share with you the difference in a brother and sisterhood of the fire service. Right now, sitting on this front row are four chiefs from other departments, and they came to support us. We have Chief Jeff Collins from Union City. <laughs> Chief Al Wright from uh, Riverdale. <laughs> Chief Cornelius Robinson from the city of Fairburn. Sean South. Now, the good thing about Chief South, Chief South was an employee here. <laughs> so back to what I told you, Chief South did 20 plus years with us, retired, and went and got another chick. Before we close out, I just want to see if any of our city officials would like to say anything. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am Council Member Star Cummings for Ward C at Large for C of East Point, but I'm also Battalion Chief Star Cummings for the City of Atlanta. So I'm employed, I've been with the City of Atlanta for 23 years, and just to see, like I say, these babies <laughs> from starting here and knowing where they are going to be once they, they end up over here, it is, I mean, it's an honor and a pleasure. Um, when, when I, I, I'm full of just, just seeing you out here because fire, the fire department, that's my passion. I mean, um, for me, when I came into the fire service, I know they asked you guys, they said, why did you come on? For me, I came to the fire department. When they told me they were hiring, I was like, I'm not doing it. They said, well, you know, you only work 10 days out of the month. I said, you know, I can probably do that. So that's why I did the fire department. But for me, I always had a passion to serve, always. In my community, um, in the church, when I was in school. And little did I know that the fire service would truly afford me that opportunity. I've delivered 10 babies. Um, I've been an arson investigator. I've been in fire inspection. You name it, I've pretty much done everything with fire service. I'm a tech medic. I've served for the city of Atlanta. I work with the mayor on this special detail. So I've done this. I always tell everybody, you can't go to any other job, any other profession, and get the amount of certifications that you can get from this job. So, hey, guys, y'all take this. <coughs> Your first year, learn this job. Learn the apparatus. Learn the rules and regulations. Learn the equipment. That's what's going to save you. That's what gets you home every day to these people out here. 
After that, the sky's the limit. But learn his job and know that no day is ever the same and you never, ever, ever take any day for granted. I mean, this is a blessing to be able to do this, to go out here and serve. Like you said, you started with 107 people and we ended up with eight. We're talking about the best of the best. So it didn't get any better than this right here. So, um, what's Jones, what you had to say about making sure that it's done right, that's what it's all about. Making sure that people are doing what they're supposed to. Making sure you're checking that truck off. That's important. Making sure the equipment and everything is done. It's hot out there. We do need that ice out there on that fire. We do need that fire. So just making sure that you're doing those things that we're supposed to do, doing it right. Because they always say, well, you learn it one way in, in uh, recruit school, but then, you know, once you get out there, we're going to do a little bit different. But just keeping it, making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do so that we can be safe and we get back home to our loved ones. That's what it's all about. So, again, I applaud you all. Congratulations. I know that I know we get good things from you all. Um, I would definitely be out uh, at the fire department just making sure um, that you guys have everything you need to need to make sure. I'm a phone call away, just like you thought it said to me. So, whatever it is you need, definitely feel free to reach out. Again, thank you, family, for giving them to us to serve you all. It's an honor, it's a blessing, it's a privilege. God be you. Amen. I guess it's time for us to leave and eat a little bit. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this night. You have blessed this night, and we thank you for it. We pray, Lord, that you will bless each one that was promoted, and we pray that you will bless the one that graduated. Their task will be different, but we just pray that they will stick with it. And if they continue to stick with it, I guarantee it will make them a better person, and they can serve their community very well. Thank you again for this this moment and this opportunity. Now we pray that you will bless the food that we are about to eat. In Christ Jesus' holy and righteous name we pray. Let everyone say amen. amen. amen.